everyone, it's Evelyn and thanks for stopping by. Today's video is going to be my 500 subscriber Q&A where I asked you guys here and on Instagram to send me questions and I'm going to answer every single one of them. I figured that this point in my YouTube journey would be a great one to have you guys kind of get to know me a little bit better, see who's behind this channel and get to know me as both a person and a doll collector. A huge thank you to those of you that did submit questions and I'm excited to jump into it. So let's go. What do you do for work outside of AGTube? So I am in the corporate world working full time and I do data analysis. I've always been in the payroll and HR world, um, some accounting, but now my focus is primarily in data analytics within that field. And I love it because it means that I get to be in spreadsheets all the time. And I am definitely a spreadsheet geek. How did you meet your man? And what's your job? How'd you get into that? Any other hobbies? Uh, so first question, easy answer is I met my husband my first year of college. It was his second year of college and we met at a house party. Um, we saw each other later on campus, connected and fell in love pretty quickly. We got married when I was 19 and when he was 21. And now 10 years later, from our marriage, we have two children. And as far as my job, I actually got into it while I was in college. I started an accounting internship and that really led into me realizing that I didn't like accounting as much as I thought I would. You know, I do love numbers and spreadsheets, but accounting isn't exactly the same in real life as it is in your college classes. And I realized it wasn't for me. So at that company, the payroll team actually took me on after my accounting intern internship ended. And so I really just kind of got my foot in the door there and, um, you know, got a full time job after that internship at that company, moved from that company to a couple of different ones until I landed at the one I am now. And as far as hobbies, I have quite a few. My main hobby is probably board games, tabletop games and video games. I really love both of those. Video games, I'm more into like simulation ones. So like The Sims are really fun. I've been really into more cozy games lately, but I also play stuff like Call of Duty and Far Cry. So pretty much any type of game, as long as it's not a third person shooter style game, I'll probably like. Um, tabletop games, Catan, um, Wingspan, I mean anything really. I just really love those. And then I also like to sew and crochet and craft and just kind of dabble in a bunch of things and really just enjoy life as much as I possibly can. What is your dream job? Retirements, definitely not having a job would be my ideal situation. But as far as a career, I feel very good about where I'm at now. You know, I could become a people manager one day, but I really love also just being an individual contributor and doing what I do. I'm finally at a career level I really enjoy and there's not really a whole lot I would change about the company that I work for. So I'm very fortunate in that regard. But as far as what's on my heart, I think that helping people in some capacity would be ideal. I would love to be a foster parent one day. It's been on my heart for a very long time. And it's one of those things that I can't do very well yet because I have young kids of my own right now that of course have to take the highest priority in my life. But one day if I could be a foster parent or maybe work, um, you know, as a CASA, so a court appointed um, advocate for a child, something like that would probably be my ultimate dream just because what good is my life if I'm not making a positive difference for other people. But yeah, I mean, I'm happy right now with with my career and I know that, you know, in the future when I'm in a different season of my life, I can get to other things that make my heart happy and feel fulfilled. Who has been your biggest influence and role model? 
Well, my mom is one of them, of course. I've always aspired to be a mom like her. Um, But I would say, honestly, my grandma, I know I've talked about her before on this channel, but she was an amazing woman and she was very loving and kind and just everything that I would ever want to be. She was a teacher and she was so passionate about it. She loved children. She just had a genuine love for everyone. And that's something that's really important to me as well. So my grandma, hands down, I could probably talk about her all day. I miss her so much and I really hope I'm doing her proud. If you were a piece of furniture, what would you be? Oh, this one's fun. I would probably be one of those super big, comfortable couches that feels like a hug that you sit in and you're like, oh man, this is amazing. And I never want to get up off the couch. What is your favorite book? So I don't really have an all-time favorite book, but it, I did used to read a lot and I still do when I can. I've really been enjoying the Bridgerton series lately, but I would say my very favorite book that I have read recently that still sticks with me is called Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I would highly recommend it if you like any sort of sci-fi, spacey stuff. Um, yeah, it's a really good one. Can you tell us about the moment, if there was one, when you realized or decided you'd become an adult collector? Um, yeah, I wouldn't say there was a specific moment, but I will say there was a time when I was at the American Girl store in Kansas City, and there were a bunch of parents there with their little girls and boys, young children, and I was sitting there going through, I don't even remember who I was buying at the time, but um, I was going through and trying to pick out the very perfect doll. So, um, I mean, I think we've all probably done this at some point if we've been to a store, but so I had all of them lined up and trying to look for the best one and getting my husband's feet back. And I remember thinking, oh yeah, like I can't even pretend I'm picking this out for a kid. Like I'm just a collector and it is what it is. Do you collect anything else besides AG, whether it be other dolls, pins, keychains, etc.? And yes, I do collect Rainbow High and Shadow High dolls, although not as intently as American Girl. Um, it's kind of a side collection with my daughter and I think they are absolutely adorable. Favorite doll? You can do favorite modern and favorite historical if you want. My favorite doll of all time is Kanani. Uh, she's my favorite in my collection and just my favorite of all time. And my favorite historical, especially right now, is Claudie. Who is your favorite Truly Me doll ever? This one's pretty easy. It's number 26. I mean, you can't get any better than that beautiful Addie mold with those amber eyes. She just has such a sweet look to her. So by far, she's my favorite. Who is your favorite historical doll and who has your favorite collection? So favorite historical doll is Claudie. She is absolutely stunning. I think one of my favorite dolls that they have ever done. And as far as my favorite collection, I don't like the doll as much, but Courtney's collection has been the most fun for me to collect. The time period kind of connects both my mom and I's time period. So her in the 70s, me in the 90s. And I just remember a lot of the looks that Courtney wears, my mom would wear when I was growing up. So her collection is just so fun and vibrant and cute. Do you prefer gaudies or historical dolls? So, you know, that's a hard one because that has been changing over the years. I used to not really connect with the historical dolls as much, but now I've grown to appreciate them. I will say I do still like the girl of the years more because I think there's just something so fun about that anticipation of who the next girl of the year is going to be and then picking out the pieces from her collection that you like. Um, the girl of the year collections, their clothes can be used for all of my other modern dolls, the historical dolls that I make modern, whereas each of the historical collections you really can only use for that character or other characters in that time period for the most part. So the girl of the years and their collections are a bit more versatile in that way, which of course I appreciate with having the collection that I have. What is your favorite American Girl or Pleasant Company outfit ever released? This is such a hard one because obviously they have released so many things over, you know, decades and decades. Um, Pleasant Company, you know, I have the budding artist outfit and I really like that one, but 
you know, outfits like Addie's Cape Cod dress and Kirsten's like work dress, I think it is. There's a lot of them that I would love to eventually have one day, but I just don't know. And then as far as American Girl, you know, the Mattel outfits that are coming out are all great. There's, it's just really hard to choose a favorite. It's like asking me to pick between my children. It's just impossible. What are your top three favorite dolls and why? Um, I'm going to answer this regarding my own collection. And the very first favorite doll of mine is Kanani. She's my top favorite doll. I don't think anybody will ever top her. Part of it is that she was released in 2011, which is the year that I met my husband. So it's a very special year for me. Um, but also she's just obscenely gorgeous. Um, everything about her is amazing. And she's like the one that I would keep out of all of my dolls. Second would be Marisol. She was the first doll that I ever got for my collection. I got her from my grandma and she's special in that way. But the Josefina mold is probably my favorite. And she was my first doll with that mold. Um, she's gorgeous and I adore her. And my third favorite is you know, honestly, my favorites change quite a bit. Right now, I would say River, and she's the one who's my profile picture. She is a customized, I believe, Truly Me 117, and I just really adore her. Every time I look at her, I just, oh, she's just so cute, and she looks good in every single wig I try on her. I use her as a wig model, and yeah, I would say she's just quickly become one of the favorites in my collection unexpectedly. What is your favorite outfit to put your dolls in? Oh, it's definitely Molly's 1944 swimsuit. It doesn't really look like a swimsuit. It just looks like a cute little sundress. And the color is my favorite color probably ever. So this one, and I specifically really love to put it on both Kanani and Nanea. Congrats on 500. What camera and editing software do you use? So I actually keep it very simple. I use my iPhone 14 Pro Max for all of my filming and all of my photography. I do own a DSLR, but it just doesn't take the same kind of pictures that my iPhone does. And as far as editing my pictures, I use the iPhone's just regular photos app to kind of get started. And then I'll pull the picture into an app called Snaps seed, which is free. And it has things like a healing brush and like a dodge burn brush, uh, eye clarity. So I really love that. And for my videos, I predominantly use Canva, which, you know, you can use for more than just video editing, but that's what I really like to use. And then also I tend to use iMovie some as well. It just depends on the type of video that I'm making because effects and graphics are so much easier to put on a video in Canva. What would you advise for a new YouTuber of AG? I would say first and foremost, just get your stuff out there. Start making content. Um, you know, the first video that I did was an All My Dolls video, and I felt that that was a great introduction to my channel and to my collection. And those are extremely popular here on AGTube. So maybe start with something like that. That way you can kind of gather some viewers that might be interested in your content. And then I also found it very helpful to already have an AGIG, that's an Instagram for my American Girl dolls, that it was already established. So at the point of creating this channel, I had about a thousand followers on AGIG. So I had friends and followers that I could look to for support and also advice. You know, what do people want to see out of an AG? YouTube channel. I asked a ton of questions over there, gathered a bunch of feedback, and although of course primarily I want to make content that I love and that I would like to see here on AGTube, I also want what I'm making to be relevant and useful and something that my audience would like to watch too. So AGIG, start there. Um, that's a big tip. And then 
Actually, Christy from AG Takes Over has an amazing video on this. I'm going to link that in the description below. She actually has a couple of YouTube videos that would be very useful. Christy has over a thousand subscribers on here. She's done very well. She's created so many wonderful videos. So she's definitely somebody that I look up to on here and think that she'd be a great resource for you as well. Which of your videos was the most fun to make? I would say my create your own video where I got my very first CYO doll and basically talked about the entire process and my thoughts on it. And I got AGIG's thoughts on it as well. Would you ever do an episode with AG and Zodiac signs? Example, do the dolls fit their signs? Uh, short answer is no, because I just don't know much about Zodiac signs. I know I'm a terrible millennial, but um, I'm just not very well versed on the topic. Who was your first doll? So Kirsten was technically my very first American Girl doll. My grandma gifted her to me when I was three years old, and she sewed a bunch of amazing outfits for the doll, but that doll existed only at grandma's house for me. Of course, at three years old, I was a little bit too young for the doll, but she was a specific grandma's house toy, and I've always lived about eight hours away from my grandma, so... I didn't really grow up with Kirsten every single day, um, but when I was 12 years old, I decided that I really wanted Marisol. So my grandma did gift me Marisol for Christmas that year in 2005, and ever since, I have been actually actively seeking out and collecting American Girl, so I remember always asking for either an American Girl or clothes for my birthdays and stuff after that, so I I kind of count Marisol as my first doll because she's the first one that I saw and loved and wanted and the one that really sparked my interest in being a collector rather than just playing with dolls, if that makes any sense. How do you get into AG and doll collecting? So this was due to my grandmother. She was a historian and she was a teacher. So the idea of these American Girl dolls was a huge hit for her. I know that she appreciated all of the historical detail that went into the outfits. And when I was three years old, she gifted me Kirsten. She didn't purchase the Kirsten collection for me and instead had basically made a bunch of handmade outfits for me each representing time periods where my relatives grew up. I may have kind of gone into this on another question, but just a little bit of backstory. So she did that for me. And then each of the following four granddaughters that she had, um, she did that for as well. So there are five granddaughters and we all got an American Girl doll. I was the very first one. So that's where that kind of spark started. That's how I had heard of the brand and how I liked it. And then of course, when I was 12, that's when I really decided to start collecting. I had gotten the American Girl catalog to my house because of my grandma. So it's all due to her really. And now that she's gone, I still can feel connected to her through this hobby, which is absolutely amazing. How many dolls do you have? How long have you been collecting? And who's your favorite girl of the year? I currently have 51 dolls in my possession right now, including ones I'm fixing up to sell. Um, I've been collecting since I was 12 years old, so that would be 18 years. Um, although I got my first doll at three, and my favorite girl of the year is Kanani. Which doll do you feel very connected to at this very moment? I would say definitely Juliet. She's my custom Chrissa doll made to look like my grandma when she was little. I have her displayed next to a picture of my grandma and every time I look over there, I see both of them and it makes me happy. If you could create a historical character, what would be their story and how would they look? So I'm not very good at the storytelling aspect, but I do love the idea of the rumored historical doll. I believe her name was supposed to be Ning and she was a Chinese American uh, during the gold rush. I think that would be an amazing story and we desperately need Asian American representation in the historical line. So that would probably be the doll that I would want to be created. And of course I would use number four's face mold 
they need to bring that back but no bangs no line eyebrows maybe just like a beautiful straight long black wig what theme do you hope to see in a girl of the year doll you know honestly it would be really comforting to just have a girl of the year that doesn't have any special talents like I didn't really when I was a kid I mean I was book smart but just a regular person that would be awesome which outfit brings the most nostalgia from when you began collecting? Definitely the on-the-go outfit. It was the first one that I got after I got Marisol. Um, getting American Girl stuff was not very common for me. So this one, I'll always remember that Christmas. I was so excited. How do you organize your collection? And what are some of your most wanted outfits and items? My collection storage is a little bit all over the place right now. I'm still trying to figure it out, especially as it's really grown a whole lot recently. So for all of my clothes and accessories, I have one of those tall Alex drawers from Ikea. And that's where I put, you know, like shirts, shorts, basically mix and match pieces. And then in kind of smaller Sterilite three drawer carts, I have my collections that are for a specific doll, historical. So like Courtney, Nanea, and Julie are the main three that I collect for. So I have those in drawers. And then I have some other drawer units that have things like doll food, my wigs, stuff like that. But what I'm really struggling with right now is what do I keep together as far as outfits are concerned and what do I put in with the rest of the mix and match? So um, how am I going to be storing outfits that I want to keep together as an outfit, if that makes any sense? So far, I've gotten some kind of um, zipper storage bags and I'm going to give that a shot, see if that works. But the main thing is that I want to be able to see everything. Um, you know, I want it to be clear. I want to have a good view of what I have because previously stuff was getting lost because it was just in the back of a drawer. As far as my dolls, I have those on bookshelves right now. Eventually, I would like to get better storage for them, but I have about 50, maybe a little bit more than that. And so the easiest thing for me right now is just to have some bookcases with them sitting on it. My most wanted outfit right now would be Nanea's Palaka outfit, although it's so expensive that I'm definitely not going to be getting it. But um, items, I don't really know. I know that I really want the coffee shop at some point, although I did just see an image of an R Generation one that might actually be even better than the American Girl one at a much better price. And then dolls, I really want number four. I have to find the right one, though, because... There's a lot of them out there for two, three hundred dollars that are just not in good shape. And a lot of them have really faded face paint, which I can fix. But I don't know. I think I would probably want like a newer number four as opposed to a pleasant company number four. So at this point, I'm just kind of looking for the right one. Do you have any custom dolls? Uh, yes, I do. And I'm planning on making several more. Right now, I have River, who is a custom Truly Me 116. I have Meadow, who is a custom Truly Me 119. I have Winter, who is a custom Truly Me 118. Um, I don't have my custom Truly Me 90 named yet. I've got Juliet, who is a custom Chrissa. Celeste, who is a custom, I'm not really quite sure. <laughs> um, I have Aaliyah, who is a custom McKenna. Avery is a custom Marie Grace. Jade is a custom number 37. And Aspen is a custom Truly Me 80. Do you have a dollhouse? Um, no, I do not. I want one so badly though. And in fact, right now my husband is in the process of kind of looking into the materials we would need and stuff like that. He came in here earlier today and he was like, you know, if I do, you know, an attic on this, it's going to be taller than me, <laughs> you know? So we're just kind of talking about it and seeing what we can do to fit our space, our budget, all those kinds of things. And it'll be kind of a beginning woodworking project for him. So I will share more details on that as we get closer, but um, yeah, I really hope that it'll be happening soon because I've wanted an AG dollhouse since I was little. What doll would you suggest for a fairly new collector with like one doll only, CYO or pre-made? Um, in this case, I would definitely say pre-made unless you are wanting a specific 
combination that you can't achieve outside of the CYO generator, I would say 110% get a pre-made doll first. Now, it also depends. Are you wanting to create your own character? If so, of course, you have the Truly Me dolls, but a good compromise might be a custom doll. So there's this custom doll website. It's called Oh Dear Custom Dolls. The price point on these is $165 down. So some are about $140 or so. She has gobs of different combinations of skin tone, hair color, eye color, anything that you can think of. She uses genuine AG parts, so there's no, you know, off-brand eyes. She'll use an off-brand wig here and there, but only really good quality ones that look like AG. So I would, I would say if you're wanting something unique, don't go the CYO route. Go get a custom doll from her or from any other custom doll creator, because not only are you, you know, getting something that's unique and one of a kind and special for you to be able to create a character, you are also supporting that business, that person's small business and their livelihood. So in my opinion, that's a win-win. I personally customize my own dolls and that's been a really fun hobby in and of itself. So all that to say, definitely get a pre-made doll. And if you're looking for something more unique, and that's why you're kind of thinking the CYO route, maybe look at Odier oh Custom Dolls, Copper Cadence. Hers are a little bit more expensive, but there's plenty of customizers out there who do great work. And you can get a one-of-a-kind unique doll, unique to your collection, and it's going to be cheaper or about the same amount of money as a CYO best way to get retired items. I would say definitely eBay, Mercari. Those are great. I found that shipping rates are cheaper on Mercari and I've just kind of generally had a better experience there than on eBay. But Facebook Marketplace has really come in clutch lately for me. I recently found a CYO doll on there and she came with a bunch of clothes that were also retired. So, you know, you could look for American Girl lots. That way you get more bang for your buck and you might find some treasures in there. When will you get Josefina? Soon, I hope. So I'm actually looking for the perfect Josefina, which I think is going to be like an older Josefina that still has good face paint. If anybody sees one, definitely let me know. Otherwise, I'll end up getting her new hair probably this year or next. What is your next CYO going to be? Probably this one um, with the darkest skin tone, Kaya mold, freckles, light brown eyes, and black, long natural hair. What are some names for your dolls that you never used? Um, A couple I can think of off the top of my head, probably like Emery, Bria, Harmony, Lyric, Flora, Carly, Sonnet, Um, that's all I can really think of. I don't really have a list of names like I probably should. What's it like being a mom and doll collector? Are your kids allowed to play with your dolls? So yes, they are allowed to play with my dolls. And in fact, I encourage it. We like to do pretend play in this house and dolls are perfect for that. Of course, I do have some, I guess, top shelf dolls, so to speak, that I really don't want them messing up their hair or um, things like that. But we love to play with them. And honestly, having children has kind of enriched my doll collecting experience because I do get to share that passion with them. And it just makes everything in my life so much more fun anyway, because kids have this way of looking at things and looking at the world with so much wonder. So I I love it. And of course, I had two girls, which is probably a lot of our dreams <laughs> as doll collectors, but it is absolutely amazing and wonderful. How do your friends react when you tell them you collect dolls? So only two of my friends know that I collect dolls and of course my husband and any ex-boyfriends that I have, but they didn't really react. We were at a mall in Kansas City, the one that had the American Girl store. And I was like, hey, I collect American Girl. Can we stop by the American Girl store? And they're like, sure, cool. So they didn't really react. They just were like, oh, cool. All right, we'll go look. That's fine. And never really brought it up again. We're still friends. They still know I like dolls. That's fine. But for some reason, I'm extra anxious about the possibility of telling any of my female friends. I'm not sure why. 
Uh, maybe it's that stigma of, you know, they grew out of dolls and I didn't. And somehow that makes me feel a little bit inferior. I struggle with an anxiety disorder. And so I get in my head about that too much. I know I shouldn't. And I know I should be a little bit more open with it. But more recently, I've been, you know, displaying the dolls more in my general home. So I figure if they see them, they see them. And if they ask about it, I'll just say, yeah, I like them. I collect them and it's no big deal. But I'm not going to specifically like be like, hey, by the way, I collect dolls. Like they just, if they find out organically, that's fine. And if not, that's fine with me too. Do you go out with your dolls? If so, how do you overcome that first time fear? Uh, The short answer is no. I have not really gone out with my dolls. I have with my four-year-old daughter. And the first time that we did that, so we have a nature preserve by our house and it's got a lake and a forest and um, it's got beautiful scenery. I really should take my dolls out there more often, but I went with my daughter and we were taking some pictures of my doll winter in a tree and these ladies passed by and they were like, oh, look at the doll. And it was, you know, not demeaning to me, but it was like, oh, that's so cute, you know, with my my daughter and her doll. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, would people say something if I were alone? I don't know. And I don't know if I want to find out. I don't know if I'm at that place yet where I can kind of handle that kind of what I perceive as social rejection, so to speak. So I, like I said, I've, I've gone out a couple of times with my daughter And she's really kind of been my anxiety shield as far as that's concerned. So I don't have any tips because I'm right there in that same boat of feeling uh, self-conscious and uncomfortable about it. I do hope to one day push past that. And I think it might be easier to do that if I had maybe a doll collector friend, like another adult to go with where we're both doing that. Um... But yeah, I don't know. If anybody has any tips, definitely leave them in the comments below because I think that a lot of us struggle with that anxiety for sure. And to end on a fun note, which AG doll do you think would make the best Barbie? Definitely my doll River. I'll put a picture up of her kind of almost cosplaying as Barbie. She is so cute in this like Malibu Barbie bleach blonde wig. But out of all of the dolls that are available, like as is, obviously probably Truly Me 100. You know, you've got the blonde hair, blue eyes, everything um, feature wise that Barbie has. And that's all the questions we have for today. I know that was a lot, but I really wanted to make sure to respond to all of you. And if you didn't see your question up here, I either missed it or it was a duplicative one that I already had. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video, especially if you made it through like 30 minutes of me talking. That's pretty impressive and much appreciated. Until next time, take care of yourselves and we'll chat soon. Bye guys.